now of course it's time for you to try out all these SQL queries on a real MySQL database and I want you to I, I want to show you how to do all of that first of all for those who are using Windows you first need to have your WAMP server running if your WAMP server is not running your database system is not running and so you won't be able to try it out okay to check if your WAMP server is running see if there's a W icon in the bottom right of your screen if that's not there then you look at this small triangle here small up facing triangle click on that and on the resulting pop up see if there's a W icon anywhere there well it's not there so in my case the WAMP server is actually not running so before I do anything I need to start up the WAMP server the way to start up the WAMP server is if you have installed it following the instructions the previous week then you will see an icon W icon like this that's the WAMP icon W and to start the WAMP server all you have to do is to double click it okay and then you're going to see this uh, warning message coming up do you want to allow the program to to run you say yes and the funny thing is nothing much happens because it's a server program you don't expect it to do anything on your screen but you know that it's running because you see that the W icon is now appearing in your status bar okay so the W icon is here so it's saying that WAMP server is actually running and it's also saying that the server is online okay sometimes if you don't see it here after you run the program all you have to do is to pop this up and you will see the icon right here okay so the W presence of the W icon tells you that the WAMP server is now running for those who are using Max, it's very easy to start up the server all you have to do is to go into your launcher and there you should see an icon for the WAMP server double click it and this time the result is a lot more obvious you'll see a big window that comes up on your screen and the WAMP server is obviously running because you see that window up there <coughs> okay now once your WAMP server is running to check that it's running all you have to do is to uh, go to this W icon press it click on it and then you see this menu that appears and then just click on a uh, local host and you should see this window indicating clearly that the WAMP server is running and you were able to access the home page of the WAMP server from your browser from an internet browser automatically that will open up in your default browser so that shows you that WAMP server is running for the Mac folks as soon as you start the WAMP server the window will pop up and immediately it will open up the start page of the WAMP server on a browser page that automatically comes up and once you see that you know that the WAMP server is actually running okay so that is how you get the WAMP server started but in order to do SQL you need to run the PHP MySQL okay so here you see here PHP my admin this is what you click in order to get a window from which you can interact with your MySQL server as I've already pointed out when you run the WAMP server you're running an Apache web server and you're also running the MySQL database server for now we are only interested in the MySQL database server of course everything is going to be accessed through the Apache web server but that is sort of transparent currently okay so in order to start using your SQL click on PHP my admin <coughs> let me take a little bit of time for that window to come up now for the Mac users from the main page of your WAMP server on the top you see a small bar and PHP my admin is on the bar so on that bar you click on it and then you should come to a window which looks pretty much similar to what you're seeing on the screen right now okay so you see that now in order to access my in fact you are now connected to your MySQL database the fact that this window comes up tells you that MySQL is up and running and it's fine okay now before you can try out all the queries that we just discussed in class what you need to do is to first create the database on which you can do the queries now don't worry you don't have to create the database to go through a lengthy process to do that all you have to do is on blackboard 
you see that I have posted a file called spjnew.sql. Okay, this is posted on Blackboard under week two uh, SQL introduction. So you see that first download the file, save it somewhere on your computer. And then all you have to do is click import and then click on choose file and then here you just uh, browse to wherever that file is the spjnew.sql wherever you saved it browse to it and then open it so in my case uh, i'm going to go to wherever i stored it now that's up to you depends on where you stored it so i'm going to where i stored it SDJ News right here. So I'm going to click on it and say open. And then I have, it shows that it's here. And then I just click on go. And it loaded the file. It says import has been successfully finished. 28 queries executed. And once you've done that, you will see on the left hand side, it shows all the data. Now, by the way, you're not going to see all these databases on your screen. Right, because my SQL server has got a lot of databases. Yours will not have any of these databases, in fact. And you will probably just see SPG new, nothing else. Okay, so that's the database that you will have. In order to start using the database, you can click on SPG new. And then you will see all the tables which are in the database, which is, you know, suppliers, projects, parts, shipments, all the four tables. Okay. Now, so you've got all the data that I've been using for our uh, lecture. Now you can do SQL queries on this. So for example, I click on SQL and I can just go in right here and type the query. So I can say select, I said it's not case sensitive, so you don't have to worry, select star. I can just type from suppliers right here or alternately I can subtype the from suppliers on the next line if you just want to. Nice. And then once you've typed the query, click on go. It executes the query and there's the result. Okay. Supplier S1 Smith status city. So you're seeing all the rows that are output. Forget all these things. These are all used to, if you want to edit the database, like delete a row or edit a particular row or copy a row and paste it, all those things. Forget that. We'll just see the results right here. Okay. So this is how you operate on it. And there you go. That's all you have it there. Okay. This is how you work on it. Or let's try, uh, you know, you, you could do one more query. For example, you could say, S name, comma, uh, I'm just going to give a junk field. S name, comma, let's say supplier name and status, right? I'm going to mistype the name status. S-T-S-T-U-S instead of S-T-A-T-U-S. I'm going to type, mistype it. So you just want to see what kind of an error message you get. Now that's very important because when you're learning SQL, you're going to make a lot of mistakes and you need to be able to look at the error message and fix your mistake and not just throw up your hands and say there's something wrong. Okay, so we've got an error. When I type go, okay, it says here the error message, unknown column, S-T-S-T-U-S in field list. Okay, that's pretty clear. It's saying, look, you've, you've got a column called S-T-S-T-U-S. I don't know what that column is, right? It's not able to figure it out because there is no such column in the table suppliers that you have mentioned. You say, oh, okay, I get it. And I say status. And then you again press go. And now you get the results. Okay. So when you get an error message, you should look at the error message, read it carefully and try to make sense of it rather than just say, I'm getting an error. Well, it's telling you what the error is. Try to fix it. Try to understand what it's saying. It, usually, when you look at it, you should be able to understand it. And once you fix it, once you make a lot of mistakes, you then uh, learn what's going on. Okay, so that, that's the idea. That's how it works. And the process is pretty much the same on the Mac as well, on MAMP as well. Okay, so use this and first try out all the queries that we did in class. I would really encourage you to go and try out every single query. In fact, it's not a good sign if you don't make any mistakes at all. 
you should make a few mistakes because that's how you learn. In fact, if you're getting everything right, I would suggest just go type in some junk. You know, type in a column that doesn't exist. Without a comma. Type a, you know, a table name that doesn't exist and so on. Okay. Make all sorts of mistakes. See the error message. Read it carefully. Try to understand what it's saying. Then you'll really be in good shape.